Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, go ahead and subscribe and turn on that post notification bell so you'll be notified whenever I post a new video. So it's been about a month now, I want to say three, three weeks, four weeks since I've been door dashing. And I just want to share with y'all some things that I wish I knew prior to me door dashing that I know now. So just stay tuned and we're going to get right into it. First things first, you do not have to accept every order that they give you. When I first started dashing, y'all, I was literally accepting every order. Every order that came through, I was taking it. And it would take me like forever just to get to like $50, only because I was really accepting every order. So it could be an order that was $2.50 for like eight miles. That is, no, never again in my life will I ever accept $2.50 for eight miles. Mm -hmm. Some people tip too, like they'll tip you on the app and then also once you deliver their food like if they say hand it to me some people also tip a little extra too so just because you get an order and it may be like two dollars the people could be waiting till you get there to tip once you know you get they get their food and the food is on time and all of that but still like i can't take no chances like i need to know that this is what i'm getting because of course you'll be pissed if you was to try to wait and see if somebody will give you more money than you get there and all you really pocket is that little two dollars and fifty cents and you done drove six miles out your way you can decline as many orders as you want it will um affect your acceptance rate but regardless you can still dash the only thing that i will say is if you want to become a top dasher um you do need to have your acceptance rate kind of high and top dasher is like i think it just gives you the opportunity to dash whenever you feel like it so for me i don't want to be a top dasher like my area is always busy so the only time you can dash, let me, let me say that. The only time that you can dash is if your area is busy. If not, you have to set a schedule. So for me, I don't set a schedule. I just dash when I feel like it because in Charleston, South Carolina, it's always busy. So I can, I'm always able to dash. I don't have to make a yeah. schedule. If you're not looking to become a top dasher, you do not have to accept all the orders that they give you. Like I said, $2.50, basically that means the customer didn't tip, meaning... I want to say that the restaurant, the delivery fee for that restaurant was already $1.99 or $2.99 or something like that. And the customer, if you only getting like $3 from that, I mean the customer didn't tip. You only getting what the delivery fee. So especially if the customer didn't tip, I'm not accepting. When they send you an order, you have about 30 seconds to either accept or decline. Within those 30 seconds, they do give you a map and you can see on the map um, where you're going. So if you know, like you look at the map and you can tell you have a far distance, like say your distance is like 11 miles and you only get $5. I would not accept, but if the distance was like 11 miles, but they was tipping like $12, then hmm, maybe I might take that because, you know, it's, it's worth the drive. Also, another thing you need to be aware of too is if you get something that's, okay, like for me, I'm going to say here in Charleston, DoorDash isn't everywhere, so some places would be out of my zone, like I would deliver outside of my zone. So let's say I got like a 12 mile drive, okay, boom. 12 mile drive for $15, okay, boom. So I drive those 12 miles, deliver the food. After I deliver the food, those 12 miles I have to drive back in town, I'm not on the clock, basically. Like, I'm losing money because I was outside of my zone. So I have to wait till I come back inside of my zone before they can start sending me orders again. So I guess it's one of those things where, I don't know, if you want to go outside your zone and have to come back in, you can accept those orders. Or if not, some people will just not go out they just rather not go outside their zone they rather just stay inside their zone so those are some orders that they'll decline so it's up to you and if you want to go outside your zone so for me i also signed up for uber eats so what i the next time i go outside of my zone i think what i'm gonna do is log out of doordash and log into uber eats just to see if that area is um takes uber eats then that way i won't be losing money because i could just uber eat in that area until i get back in my zone and then either continue Uber Eats or either go back to door dash. Also, like I said, when they send you an order and you can look at the map, you can tell on that map if you're going into, well, you can't really tell, but if you know your city, then you'll know what areas are good and what areas are bad. So on that map, you'll be able to see exactly where you're going to. So if you know you're going to a bad area and you don't wish to dash that area, you could decline the call and just say you don't want to go to this restaurant. And I mean, like two seconds later, they'll send you another order depending on how busy your area is. So when I started out, my acceptance rate was like 100% because like I said, I was accepting every order that they sent me. Now my acceptance rate is like 40 something percent. Like I said, I ain't worrying about it because your girl trying to make money and I can't make no money. I can't make no money if y'all only trying to give me $3 for a 15 mile drive or $3 for an 8 mile drive. So for me right now, I'm only accepting like $5 if it's only like up to like 3 miles. And then after that, it's like if it ain't $6, $7, I ain't going no more than like eight miles like i don't know i'm trying to come up with like a per mile per dollar if that makes sense 
So I'm trying to come up with what I'm gonna do because, like I said, a lot of times people give me like ten dollars and I'm going like a fifteen minute drive. I'm like, do I really want that? Is that really? So worth another it? thing I wish I knew too prior to dashing is the best time to dash y'all is the morning because that's breakfast, the afternoon because that's lunch, and the evening because that's dinner time. Well, I mean, that's common sense, but still. So, also on top of that, sometimes they do like these promotions and like they'll offer a dollar extra per order. They'll do $2 extra per order or they'll do $3 extra per order. So, of course, that's also a good time to dash too because you know you get paid extra for, you know, the work that you do. Also, in my area, a lot of times they do peak pay. So, peak pay is like 12 to 2. So, that's basically the peak. That's the lunch hour. So, a lot of times I wake up and I check my app just to see, you know, what's available for me to dash and what's busy and what's not busy. And a lot of times they'll do like the peak pay. So sometimes with the peak pay too, or even with the promotions period, sometimes they'll let you know ahead of time if there's a promotion, you can go ahead and schedule to dash so that you can get the promotion. And then other times they just pop up. So like, I don't schedule nothing and I don't see no promotions coming up. Then one day I might just wake up in the morning, just log in on my phone and it's like, you know, Dash now offering an extra two dollars in your area. So then I'm like, boom, let me go Dash because they're offering an extra two out two dollars. So like I said, sometimes they'll let you know about the promotions, and sometimes you just don't know. It's really like spur of the moment. But that's the best time to Dash because that's the best time that you can get some extra. So money. another good time to Dash would be holidays. So that like Valentine's Day just passed, and I made I want to say ninety two dollars in just three hours of dashing. Any holiday, they're gonna offer you more money, like a promotion. Only because a lot of people are not dashing, but yet a lot of people are ordering. I also feel like it may not be a lot of dashes in my area because a lot of times when it's busy, I always see those promotions. So I feel like maybe it's not a lot of dashes in my area, so they need people to work. So they're trying to offer the promotions to get people to work. I don't know, but St. Patrick's Day is coming up March and your girl will be doing that. So that week of Valentine's Day, I worked February 14th, which was Valentine's Day. I worked that Monday. I worked that Thursday evening for a little bit. I worked that Saturday and that Sunday. So those four days, which were a, which was a total of 16 hours altogether, and I bought home $416. So $416 in 16 hours, which is the same equivalent to like, I wanna say a nine to five, but just two days, eight hour shifts. I bought home $416, so you really can't. Another thing I wish that I knew prior to dashing would be if you get to a restaurant and there's a wait on the food, leave. I remember one night they gave me a Burger King order and I, I was in line 45 minutes waiting on that order. They also did the same thing to a Wendy's. I was in line about 45 minutes to an hour waiting on the food. What I didn't know was you could decline the order once you get into the line and just say, uh, you declined it because you can't do this order due to the line being too busy, the line being too long or something like that. Whenever they send your order, you have a time frame that you have to have the order picked up by. Then you also have to have the order delivered by a certain time. So if you're late delivering the order, you will get a violation regardless if it's your fault or the restaurant's fault because the food wasn't ready. I think you can like appeal it or something like that. I haven't even gotten that far yet because I've only done that, like I said, twice. And after that, I just appealed it, wrote them, let them know I hadn't heard anything back yet. But I do know because I did get a violation because of that, I will no longer be waiting on anybody's food. Only time I wait on somebody's food is if it's like a nice tip and they're like preparing the food in order. The food is about to be ready. It's not quite ready yet, but you got about three minutes to wait. I will wait, but if I know they didn't start making the order until I just got there, a lot of restaurants too are now doing um, drive-through only, I guess due to COVID, and they don't have a lot of people working. So a lot of restaurants are doing drive-through only. And in those restaurants, you have to sit in the line and wait till it's your turn to get to the register. And then you tell them, I'm got a DoorDash order. And then they'll tell you like, okay, see you at the window. Like, well, y'all just can't tell me to pull around and y'all gonna bring my food. Yeah. So do not wait on nobody's food, y'all, because you're wasting money, which is, I mean, you're wasting time, which is essentially wasting money. Like those 45 minutes that I was just sitting at Wendy's, I could have done two other or two or three other orders within that time frame. Another way to double your earnings with DoorDash is say they send you double what is called double dash or something like that so basically say they send you an order for chipotle boom you go to chipotle you get ready to pick up that order they send you another order for wendy's and they're like um accept this nine dollars for an additional two miles so you know the wendy's is literally on your way to the house that you're going to already so you get that pick up that chipotle order you head to wendy's you go to wendy's so you drop off the chipotle order and then your wendy's orders is just two miles further than the order that you just dropped out. So you're literally getting $16.
you're literally getting y'all yeah, i'm not good with math you're literally getting 16 dollars for an extra two miles so it's all within the same area so it's not like a waste of money or a waste of time because you're you're getting and it i'm gonna too. say sometimes because sometimes they do try to get you and they play like, accept this additional six dollars for 12 miles and it's like do i really want to drive 12 miles like no so you can either accept it or you can decline it you do not have to do the double order i remember one time my very very first double order i want to say i looked up i literally took one order from a wendy's and then the next order was sonic which was really literally like not even a whole mile down the road so i stopped at the wendy's then i stopped at the sonic I went to deliver the food and it was like for an additional 763 yards. So I'm like, hmm, this, this house has gotta be like right next to each other. When I got to the address y'all, one was 18 something and the other was 20 something. So they were literally like not next to each other. It was a house in between the two houses that I had to deliver to. So that was like the perfect order. And I think that alone made me like $16. So now when I do that y'all, I have stipulations and I have rules and yeah. So when I do that now, I don't accept any order less than $5. Period. Now, I'll sell five dollars if it's like 0.3 miles or something like that away. Other than that, it's like six dollars, seven dollars, or that I will accept. I do not take anything more than nine miles unless the tip is like 12, 13, 14, 15. So now, y'all, since I've been that door dashing, your girl feel like she a door dashing pro. And it's funny because now that I'm talking to y'all about door dashing, they messaging me now, like, hey, there are hungry people in your area. Would you like to dash now? Uh, North Charleston is busy at the moment. And it's crazy because it's 425 so it's about to be the dinner time so like i said my area always stay busy so i can always dash on elvis so i ain't worrying about no top dash so i think what i'm gonna start doing is i think i'm gonna start door dashing mondays thursdays and fridays because those typically are the busiest days because you know the weekend for mondays the weekends have just passed so a lot of people eat out on sunday so they didn't cook sunday night so they need some food monday so that's why i feel like mondays are busy and then thursdays a lot of people have fridays off so they're um getting you know that's when the weekend starts so they eating out thursday night and then of course the weekend is saturday sunday so fridays of course that's when it's busy saturday sunday is definitely busy so i think your girl's gonna doordash i'm gonna make my schedule i think i'm gonna doordash mondays thursday fridays saturdays and sundays so y'all know i have been looking for a job since i want to say last october well not last october october just passed and i hadn't had any luck i mean and then mentally i wasn't i'm 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 not ready to go inside anybody's office listening to anybody telling me what to do what i can and can't do having to request time off if i want to break like i mentally no nah, that wasn't for me i have been a stay-at-home mom for almost four years like i don't think that going to the office i don't think working anybody i don't mm -mm, i don't think that was for me so i feel like this is the perfect job for stay-at-home moms who's looking for a second income or just want some additional money and you know for people who just looking for a side hustle or part-time job or anything like that doordash is really the way to go because you doordash as you please you make your own hours you work when you want to like you got the freedom another good thing about doordash too is you can take whoever you want with you as long as it don't it doesn't interfere with your job you can bring whoever you want with you so a lot of times i doordash with my husband and my kids and like i said it's perfect for me last and finally the thing that i wish i knew before door dashing is there's an app called Everlance and the Everlance app actually tracks your miles. So when tax time comes, you can actually write those miles off and you can get, um, of course, some of your earnings back from using your car and driving all of those miles. So I downloaded the Everlance app and like I said, your first, I don't can't remember how many, but your first trips are free for them to track and you just track your miles and voila. Tax time come, you can write them off and yeah, get some of money back. Thank y'all for watching this video. I will be doing more DoorDash. I'll probably do like a DoorDash for beginners or a how to DoorDash or DoorDash with me for the day or something like that. So just stay tuned if y'all want to see more of me dashing. And yeah, I will see y'all in the next video.